Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is busy. And this is my second run of doing this video because the first one just took me too damn long. I was gushing just a little too much on this knife. So I want to thank Lefty EDC for sending me this knife to review and check out. Um, I also put an edge on it for him. We'll go into that towards the end. But let's just get right into this amazing, amazing, beautiful knife because this is a knife that's right up my alley. If you guys watch my channel much, you guys would know just by looking at this knife, this knife just, it looks like a knife I would love. Um, nice deep hollow ground blade on a sheep's foot blade shape, which is one of my favorite blade shapes. Um, you can see on this M390 blade, the, the two-tone finish, they have like the, the wood grain finish or whatever you would call that, that also matches the titanium scale on this side. It looks gorgeous. And it's such a deep, tall, hollow ground blade. Now, it is a thick blade stock. It is definitely a thick boy. But because of the way they did this hollow ground blade, it gets down to a very thin edge. Now, the handle is shredded carbon fiber, but they also have a full titanium version which in my opinion would be the best version of this knife but i'm you know titanium biased so um this is still a beautiful example and they milled both sides this this carbon fiber is extra milled which makes this knife and the titanium side is extra milled but which makes this knife extremely lightweight for the size i mean when you pick it up you expect it to be so much more heavier than it is it is not a brick this thing is a very light knife Going into the ergos first before the cutting. So the ergos on this thing, man, this thing is so comfortable in my hand. I know I'm normally a, uh, a very neutral grip kind of person, and this is not a neutral grip, but it works so good. Even if you don't take advantage of this choil area in your back here, it's still extremely comfortable. This little spot right there winds up right in the comfortable spot of, you know, like the crook of my palm. And it's very, very comfortable. And if you look at the grip, you notice how it goes from thinner to thicker. A lot of knives do the opposite. They go from thicker to thinner because that's the way our hands are, thicker to thinner. But in this case, it is the opposite. It goes from thinner thicker <laughs> anyways my point is is that because of that it gives you a lot of squeeze a lot of leverage you really put a lot of muscle into your grip which is going to give you a lot more control of a knife think about squeezing a pen versus squeezing a baseball bat handle you know you're going to have a lot more grip on a baseball bat than on a pen so you have a uh, maximum amount of control and grip strength. And then when you move your hands up to this finger choil area, which I absolutely love, they made it very comfortable. It's so, so nice. You can get up here really nice and tight for the push cuts or, you know, even putting your thumb up here and, you know, kind of cantering it uh, up into your palm you can get good slicing in it's just extremely comfortable all the way around it does have slight contouring but the the edges are all knocked down very nice even the pocket clip is comfortable in my hand i barely feel it yes i know it's there yes i can feel it but not much it's very very comfortable in the hand which aids to the cutting performance because even though this is such a thick blade stock because it gets down to an average of about 15 thousandths behind the edge it does have some thinner parts and some thicker parts but an average of 15 thousandths behind the edge it cuts so so good and man that edge is sharp um it cuts extremely well now yes you have this shelf here and when i say shelf i mean the top of the hollow grind right here this before it gets to the thickest part which the material does have to pass over so in order for that material to pass over it you know it or should i say in order for the blade to go through the material it has to pass over that you know the thickest part of the knife and so it does hinder it a little bit if it was a thinner blade stock 
yes, it would cut even better, but considering it's such a thick blade stock, this thing passes through very nicely. Um, it definitely has really good cutting performance, especially if you're, when you're pushing it through, you kind of do the drag as you're cutting through. It really passes through materials very nicely with the, the edge or the grind as thin as it gets behind the edge entering into material it just it's fast like it's like a laser at first uh because it's so thin for for you know a good majority of the grind you know it's it's very thin up until about right here so starting your cuts off man it, it's it'll cut through some materials fast um now if you're if it's really thick dense materials and you have to keep going and passing all the way through yes that's where the thickness of the blade is going to slow you down a little bit but it still passes through very well now the utility cuts um getting to the grip for utility cut is very nice in your hand it feels um very comfortable i tend to use these little spots for the finger choil areas to push up into my palm and you have a lot of leverage going down and being a sheep's foot blade the tip faces downward towards anything you're cutting at which is going to give you maximum amount of le leverage through your draw cuts and utility cuts you have this little spot in the back of the handle that also aids for you to push in the materials so it does great draw cuts utility cuts are very good now the s cuts if it's very dense materials it's not going to be the best but for thinner things the s cuts are just as good as any great worn cliff or sheep's foot blade but like i said when it does get thicker you are gonna you know it is going to be a little bit more of a struggle because it does, you know, get up to a thicker blade. But uh, just regular straight draw cuts, straight utility cuts, circle cuts, um, anything like that, it does them very, very well. The action. Man, this action. The detent is extremely well-tuned. It's light in a good way because well i don't even want to say light because you can hear how it sucks it in but it's it's just as good as any spider co with the reverse flick now they do have a nice big hole here so your finger will fit no matter what whether it's your thumb or your middle finger but the hole isn't chamfered like crazy yes it has a little chamfer around the edge but it's just perfect because if it's overly chamfered, it makes the, the edge slick, which you don't want. You want to be able to for it to bite your finger back so you have grip, which it does. So um, the detent isn't like crazy strong, but it's well tuned for the reverse flick or the thumb flick. I wouldn't want it any lighter or any stronger. It's perfect. You can flick this all day without getting fatigue. And the hole is in a place that feels natural. Like you feel like you're, you're always ready to deploy it regardless of where, you know, how you're holding it. It's like, it's just natural. It's right there. And the, um, when you pop it out and you break that detent, the bearings are very smooth. So, once you break the detent, it takes itself home. The blade is very heavy because of the thick spine, so it's not much effort, and it flies out very strong. Like I said, it's just as good as any spider co that you can think of for reverse flicking. Um, and I'm not trying to compare it to spider co. I'm just saying it's really good at spidey flicking or thumb flicking. Now, the lockup, very strong in all directions. I've checked it. Nice. Um, lock face geometry so the lockup is extremely good now when you unlock it this is where some people might have an issue because the choil is so big that you if you unlock it you can let it go down and hit your thumb now this has a nice fresh edge we're going to talk about in a second so it's extremely sharp um you would not want this to hit your finger right now but as long as you're confident that it's going to hit your nail and not your finger, then you're pretty safe. But you can also, 
instead of like letting it drop all the way down to your finger, what you can do is you can just use this finger and kind of push it forward and then release the lock. So I'm pushing the lock, pushing it forward, letting go of the lock. So now the lock gives it a little bit more tension, which will give me time to turn it around. You can do the same thing upside down, kind of push it up and then flip it. Or you can just get yourself out of the way nice and quick. So when you unlock it, you just kind of unlock it, let it start dropping and then move your finger. Once you release the lock, it'll slow down a little bit for you to get out of the way. You know, or you can just two hand it like, or two finger it where you just push it up and then slap it shut with your finger. I mean, there's you guys know how to unlock a knife, but in this case, you do want to be a little bit more careful. You don't want to hold too far down and let that blade get you in the finger because it is a heavy blade and it does come down quick. Now, it's not fall shut action, but it's so close. I mean, it's very, very close. It's practically fall shut action, but I actually say that in a good way because it has a nice controlled drop that's very, very smooth. And I like that. I like that even better than just a straight fall shut action rather than it just going wham. I'd rather it be nice and controlled. It just really says a lot about the bearings and how tight they are in the pivot and the tolerances that are involved. Um, now. It does feel loose, though, because it's so smooth, but it's absolutely not at all, which, you know, it's just that smooth that it actually, you get it and you're like, man, is this pivot tightened all the way? And it is. It's fully tightened. It's just that smooth. Now, speaking about the pivot and the hardware, T10s which I love. Big hardware. I love big hardware. We got a T20 pivot. That's amazing. I would way rather see big hardware than little hardware on a knife. Always. It just really, one, they're easy to take out and put back in. They don't strip as easily. Um, but another thing, it really adds to the strength. You know, obviously the bigger the screw, the more surface area it has when it's screwed in. So it just really adds to the build quality and build strength, which I love. Um, external stop pins, as you can see. Now I did put a piece of paper in between there to see if the, it was hitting on both sides evenly. And it is because I was kind of wondering, is it only hitting the titanium side? And the carbon fiber side is there just for looks. Nope, it's hitting both sides. Now, some people might think that, well, carbon fiber isn't as strong as titanium, yada, yada. Well, they do have a full titanium version, which in my opinion would be my favorite version, um, just because I'm titanium biased. But it's, it's fine. It's really hitting the titanium side, which is going to add for the strength. But then the, the carbon fiber and titanium is really going to help. So there's no lateral play just to make it even that much stronger. It does not bother me one bit that it's actually hitting carbon fiber because it's also hitting titanium. Now the clip, the clip, man, this is a well executed and great example of a titanium mill clip. It very comfortably goes over the seam of your pants pocket, very smooth, with a good amount of tension, yet nice and soft to where it's not going to damage your pockets. And then on the way out, it has the exact, it goes the exact same way. And I say that because a lot of clips will go in smooth, but then come out rough. Or they'll go in and they're really tough to get over the pants, your, your pants pocket. And then over time, they, they basically tear your pants pocket. But on the way out, they're nice and smooth. With this knife, it's the exact same in and out of your pocket, nice and smooth, nice and comfortable, a great example of a titanium milled clip. No, it's not very deep, which in to some people that might be an issue, um, not saying that a deep carry clip is a bad thing, but there is a level of which how much knife is hanging out of your pocket. Now, to me, it's just fine. I just wouldn't carry two knives that don't have deep carry clips in the same pocket because I don't want to look crazy walking around with a whole bunch of knives just hanging out of my pocket because that's kind of what it looks like. But, you know, when you have deep carry clips, you don't mind carrying two knives in one pocket because all you see is the two clips. But yeah, 
it's fine. It, uh, you know, it's just it's not very deep and it does have quite a bit hanging out. Now, um, let's talk about the the bad or the the sharpening then we'll talk about the bad so sharpened up really good felt extremely good on the stone i also want to show what a burr looks like because i took a close picture after i um started on my first stone um i'll show you guys a little clip of what the grit looked like after my first stone then um then, uh, you know, my, my burr that I got, I'll show you guys a little clip. It's what a burr looks like. So a burr is basically the wire from the steel that you're removing. You're removing steel when you sharpen a knife, and then the steel winds up rolling over to the other side. So you'll have a wire on the opposite side of that you're sharpening that basically tells you that you hit from the top of the edge bevel down to the very tip of the apex. Now, when you're looking at it, that light that's reflecting back at you, the really shiny part all the way at the bottom, that is the burr. And you can see little wires hanging off of it and stuff. That is the burr. Now, as I went through my sharpening, it felt really good on the stone, felt like it had a good heat treat, and yeah, so I just kept progressing, and I basically let the steel do the talking, because lefty EDC didn't really have an edge preference, so I just kind of let the steel do the talking, and you know, let the steel basically decide which grit it wanted to be at. And as I progressed, it felt really good. As I moved up, I got to the polishing stone and it polished up very, very nicely. And now it is extremely sharp. And it took an incredibly sticky edge. Not only will it cut through paper towel just fine, very cleanly. Um, is, I mean, it's... It, be being able to cut through paper towel, your knife has to be extremely sharp, your, or the edge has to be very, very sharp. Now, also, you'll see it here with this receipt paper, how quiet and clean it cuts right through that, like nothing, like hot butter. It is very sharp. So let's take a quick look at this edge because there is one complaint on about the edge. And then we'll go into the bad. So it looks very beautiful. Came out really nice. I did lay the edge back a slight bit, just a little bit, uh, because, you know, just to give it a little bit, even though it had perfect cutting performance, this will just enhance it just a little bit more. Okay, so the one problem is, and this really isn't that big of a deal because it's pretty common, especially with knives that have hand finishing work. Now, I don't know how much hand finishing work this has, but I would guess that it had some sort of hand finishing work done with the blade. Um, well, one, I can see actually right here that you can see one side of this is taller than the other, which I can tell also with because of the angles that one side is a little deeper than the other side, which is going to affect the edge, meaning one side of the bevel is going to be bigger than the other. It's very l subtle, so it's not like just crazy, a big crazy difference, but you can see one of the edges is slightly larger than the other side. Now, um, you can also see right here at the tip that this side of the tip is bigger than the other side. Now, that I can actually see as well, and I can see right here that these are just slightly uneven, very slightly, but the tip on this side is a little thicker than on this side. Not that big of a deal. Now, because I've already done it, and now I really know that um, after sharpening and everything, I could always put it back on the stone and try to match them up as good as possible in the future if Lefty wants to send it back, or you know, I could even do it before I send it back to him and try to match it up as good as possible. But in all reality, it's not going to affect anything, and it still looks very beautiful. It's not going to 
affect the performance, and it's really not that big of a deal. But it is still a thing that I had to mention. So, a couple other negative things. Um, one, this jimping. This jimping is pretty aggressive. It's pretty widespread. It reminds me of Medford's jimping. I do wish it was closer, tighter jimping than this really spread apart type of jimping. It just, it's kind of ridiculous. Next thing, which might be a rotten design thing, but the hole through the knife, um, I know that's the stop pin for the closed position. I would have rather not seen the hole there. That's not that big of a deal, but I'm mentioning it. Um, next thing, like I said about the clip, quite a bit hangs out of the pocket. That's not that big of a deal either. None of these things are that big of a deal. Even the jimping is pretty fine in the hand. I mean, I, I overlook it very much. <laughs> um, and then the worst thing is that I have to return it. Oh, that is the definitely the worst part about this knife is that I have to return it in, you know, the next couple years or so, um, you know, whenever I get done reviewing it. But uh, I love this knife, man. This knife is awesome. It is well done, well built, extremely well built. Um, I love the grind. I love the look. I love the, the performance. I love the action. I love the way it carries. I love I just there's so much to love about this knife. And if you own one, man, congratulations to you, because this is a beautiful example of a knife. Um, by Custom Knife Factory, designed by Rotten Knives. Man, what a beautiful example. And I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Lefty. Peace.